Last week I posted a video on our homeschool curriculum and lesson plans for first grade and I mentioned that I was going to share with you guys specific lesson plans uh, that helped me plan out the entire year as well, show you how I planned out the entire year. I'm Jackie and welcome back to my channel enjoying life's journey like I mentioned last week I showed all of the curriculum and the lesson plans so if you missed that video go ahead and check it out as well I have a homeschool playlist that shows each curriculum individually so if you want to look at it a little bit closer feel free to check out the playlist I'll leave a link in the description box today we're gonna to go over three main lesson plans that I have that helped me schedule out my entire year and go over how I use them to schedule out my year. So we follow a Charlotte Mason method of homeschooling. I've mentioned this before if you want to know a little bit more about it. Uh, leave me a comment below and I can make another video specifically going over what is a Charlotte Mason homeschool. Uh, what is that method and I mentioned that we do it in an unschooling approach so I can talk about that in that video as well. You'll see a little bit of that uh, as I talk about the lesson plans. But basically on simplycharlottemason.com, I'll leave a link to her website. Um, Simply Charlotte Mason has a lot of uh, great information, a lot of free information. Uh, she has also a lot of different curriculums, so based on what uh, grade level your child is in and everything like that. You'll just see the corner of Elsa's head here. She wants, to, head she wants to sit with me. Yeah. Simply Charlotte Mason, what she's done, she's actually made it simple, made the Charlotte Mason method of homeschooling a little more, I guess, simplified, which is really, really good. Uh, so what she's done is she has kind of like this... Um, curriculum builder on her website. So she has different, uh, three different areas and this is what really helps you to plan out your year. So she has the individual studies and these ones are basic, are based on the individual child. So whether they're in first grade, second grade, third grade, things like that. And those cover the language arts, which is basically reading and handwriting, math and science. So I'll show you this more in depth in a minute here. The second area is the enrichment studies. And this one, uh, I believe there's just this one. And it's one uh, it says lesson plans uh, one through 12, and you can do this as the family. So if you have a first grader and a third grader or something like that, these ones you can actually just do together as a family. And that's basically art, music, literature, and it says and more. So they, they cover like habit, training, poetry, um, some other areas like that in here. And then the third area is your history um, and geography. And I showed this one. Um, this one happens to be modern times. I mentioned this in last week's video. She has six different time periods. This one um, as well is through um, first through 12th grade. So you do this as a family uh, and there's six of them. So she recommends that you do, um, you go through all six of them twice throughout your um, thing and she says you can do this one as a family. I'm going to show you down, um, I'm going to bring you down into each one individually and show you how I planned out my year, um, but I wanted to show you also um, how for the enrichment studies and the history, how you're able to incorporate for different age groups. This is our individual study, so this is based on the student. So Arcadia's in first grade. Um, Elsa is not in a grade level yet she's just turning three so basically we're starting with Arcadia and this is going to give us our year of language arts and math and science all right so within here they give you different terms like you would regular school well we we like to homeschool year round so what I've done and you can kind of see that here is I've actually switched it up so I could create four terms instead of three terms. So I'm going to explain that to you here in a little bit, explain that a little bit better. So for instance, we rotate our schedule. We decided that we wanted to do three days a week for school and then rotate four days a week. So we do three days, four days, three days, four days. That's what we are doing. So what I've done is I've combined, I put here week. So I have 
three together as one week, and then I have four together as two week, three together as a third week, four together as a fourth week, and so on. So I've able I've able to stretch this curriculum, these lesson, these lessons, I've been able to stretch them for the whole year instead of just the three terms. So we don't do like a, a spring break or a winter break or a summer break or anything like that. So when you get here to the the end of the my 13 week we'll actually only have two days of lessons. Um, and so we'll use the other two days for catching up, reviewing, or planning for the next year if we need to. So that's kind of what I've done to help me plan it out. All right, so the way we use this is, like I said, you have your language arts, so you have reading and writing, your science and your math. So it tells you kind of what curriculum that you wanna pick up for your lesson to go along with the lessons in here. So for reading, they have a track A reading and they have a track B reading. Now I mentioned this in the last video that if you start with this book, if you start with a track A, you can actually use this whole thing for grades one and grades two because you do track A for grade one and then you do track B for grade two. However, if your child is already further along than track A and they're at track B, then you're gonna start with track B. So you may want to go ahead and get, start with second grade instead of starting with first grade. So that's something to consider as well. So these are basically just based on where your, your child is at. So the reading and writing, this is, we picked up, I, I showed you guys, we picked up a curriculum from simplycharlottemason.com based off of this, and I'll show you that in a moment. And then science is basically you're picking your own science curriculum, and math you're picking your own math curriculum and so I'll show you that here. So within the book it gives you the complete resource guide. So what you first do is you're going to go through and, and get everything out of your resource guide. So math, you're going to pick a math course of your choice, you're going to pick a Simply Charlotte Mason science course of your choice, journaling a year in nature, and then you have your track A and track B. So this is what we have. We have the delightful reading, first steps, days go by, more days go by, and then our delightful handwriting with the student book. So we went ahead and picked up all the supplies that we need to do our lessons. And then so what we do is um, it gives you a breakdown of what the term's gonna look like. Now this is going to be a little bit different. Again, if you decide to do, these are the terms, they do the 12 weeks, so five lessons a week. Like I mentioned, we're rotating between three and four lessons a week so we can stretch it out and our terms are basically 13 weeks. Um, so it tells you what resources you need for that first term. Uh, and then it gives you a uh, layout of what the weekly schedule will look like. So you're basically gonna do math for 15 to 20 minutes every day. You'll do science twice a week for 15 to 20 minutes and you'll do a nature study once a week. And then you're reading your track A. It rotates between delightful reading, handwriting, reading, handwriting, reading. And you spend about 10 to 15 minutes on reading, five minutes on handwriting. And then when, this, when you get through half of this booklet, then you start introducing the other readers. So we have the first steps readers so your child will read from their reader for 10 to 15 minutes uh, twice a week. Now again we're doing ours different so our week doesn't look like this we have three or four days so what we've done like I mentioned is in the front here I've went ahead and just marked it so I know what I'm doing each week and then here I went ahead and just put down what the average time frame was for each day. So what I do is on you know Monday through Wednesday I just put down that we are going to, I just schedule out 35 minutes for my individual studies. So I know we're going to spend about 35 minutes on individual studies. It might be a little less. And then once the second term comes and we start doing these other readers, then I will schedule out 45 minutes. And then it has your lessons on here. So it tells you the lesson, tells you the materials you need for the lesson, gives you any cool tips. You have a spot for notes, and then you do your lessons. So for instance, track A would say spend 10 to 15 minutes working on delightful reading, go at your student's pace, and be sure to stop the lesson before your student loses attention. That's very key, you guys. If they start getting bored, they're not even gonna remember what you've done. Um, math, work on your selected math curriculum for 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, right now, we're just, you know, you've seen the stuff that we were using, okay? So for instance, so lesson one, that first day, it would just be, uh, reading and math. Uh, lesson two would be um, reading math and science. So we just go off of this. So, so right now um, we're through 
um, lesson seven, so we're, we're up to lesson eight, now is where we're at, okay? So once you have your resources, then you're going to look in your resource, so um, once you have your additional curriculum, so if you have your math course, then you're gonna look into your math course lesson plan, which is gonna be similar to this, and it's going to give you a list of resources. So you might have additional books that you need to get. It's going to tell you what equipment you're going to need for science experiments, um, things like that. Um, your math, same thing. It's gonna tell you what are some books that you could purchase to help you teach the concepts of math, what are the manipulatives that you need, things like that. So this, you start with this, you start with getting the individual studies guide, start with getting your individual curriculums for this, and then you dive into each curriculum individually to see what you need, okay? So that's the individual studies. Like I mentioned, in uh, so enrichment studies here, it's laid out very similar. Now they have volume one. I hope they make more volumes of this and I'll explain to you why. As of right now, I believe this is the only one on the website. I have to look up and see if they have more. But I've done the same thing. So I have my three lessons for one week and then my four and then my three and then my four and then my three and my four. So this is what I've done to help spread it out so I can use this for a whole year, okay? Again, it tells you a little brief how to use it. It gives you a list of all the subjects that you are going to be using in this uh, book. So let me just show you those real quick. So you basically have, I hope you guys can see this. You have picture study, poetry, Shakespeare. They recommend doing every other year. So we're gonna do Shakespeare in second grade. Music study, nature study. They have hen study and scripture memory. Now we're not doing that. So we've replaced it with our exercise and meditation, our seven laws, which is our spiritual practice. And maybe we might start adding some kind of singing in there. I'm not sure yet. Uh, handicrafts, art instruction, habit training. This is a foreign language. Uh, my husband is Filipino, so he tries to speak to the girls in Tagalog. So we don't have an actual curriculum. Um, I'm gonna be looking around and see if I can find a curriculum to see if I can help teach as well. And then we have our literature, which is the family read alouds, okay? Now again, these are enrichment studies, so you can do this with everybody in the family at the same time. It, which is really cool. So here, again, you have your resource list. So we have a bunch of stuff um, that we need to pick up. So we have our book of centuries. Um, we have, this would be your art. We're just doing like a rock painting art, um, something different. So if I switch it out from what she has, I just cross it out and put what we're using. Um, same thing, if I decided to go with different artist um, for the picture study, so I just cross it out and I'll be, um, changing that. So I cross out anything that doesn't apply to us um, and then I, I switch it out. So same thing, you're going to get these individual things and then you'll look within them, you'll look at like the music study or you'll look at the laying down the rails or you'll look at handicrafts and see what are the other resources or supplies that you need to conduct those things. And then this is where we go for our literature. This is our read aloud, family read alouds. So what they've done They've divided between three, three groups. You have your young group, which is basically first through fourth grade, your middle group, five through eight, and then your older group, nine through 12. So as a family read aloud, you're just gonna pick which group you wanna do. So just take, you know, try to average out, you know, who are the majority of your students, what grade are they in, and go with that route. So Arcadia's first grade, obviously Elsa's not at first grade yet, but she still listens when I read aloud. So we have our read aloud, books and I mentioned this before I'm only missing one Pinocchio and this is actually the list that I gave to my aunt and she bought the books for Arcadia which is really cool um, and then you have your middle group and your older group now this is the thing I was going to talk about where I hope they make other volumes because I have one list here but there's four grades worth of this list so I would have liked I would like to have four lists for the young group, four list of books for the, the young group, and four lists of books for the middle, and four lists of, for the older. That's what I would like to have um, because that would truly make it a first through 12th grade if I had those. So what will end up happening is when it comes to second grade, I'm gonna have to come up with my own list of literature unless Simply Charlotte Mason comes out with a volume two. Um, so we will see. <laughs> 
one's actually cool because there's a lot of reading. So she gives um, suggestions to where to find resources, um, everything that you can find on her website alone and some of the other websites. And then obviously looking on the internet um, and then at your library. So this is just, I really like these less of funds. So the same thing, you have your term kind of telling you, okay, these are the resources you're gonna, or these are the curriculums you're using in that term um, and what you need for your young family. So I make sure I have those. And then it gives you the, um, so your first day, you know, this is scripture, we would do meditation. We're basically doing meditation every day, habit training, picture study, and then family read out. So the first day is roughly 50 minutes. The second day is roughly 55, 50, 70, and 50 to 55. So what I do is I basically just allow ourselves an hour. I schedule an hour on those days for homeschool. So if you remember, in the individual studies, I schedule out 35 minutes and then once we get to Arcadia's readers, we'll bump it up to 45 minutes. But we have 35 minutes for individual studies and we have an hour for enrichment studies. Same thing here, so you have your lesson, tells you what materials you need, gives you any tips, and it goes through each um, thing that you're gonna be doing. So for instance, lesson one, we had our habit training, our picture study, and our family, family read aloud. Okay, and we're, again, we're on about lesson eight now. Um, and then I just put, I put my own notes on here, you know, so I put, what habit we were working on, cleanliness, uh, and then we put, I just put, um, I crossed out which artist we were doing. Same way I'm using the other one, okay? And for history, this history, geography, and Bible, I mentioned this before, we're not currently doing Bible study, we're doing the seven spiritual laws for parents by Deepak Chopra, so that's, we just replace Bible with um, our, we just do, we actually do the spiritual laws every single day, so that's different. So again, first through 12th grade, now you have, this one is a little different. It does not have the rings on the side here like these do. And I don't, I don't like that, that it doesn't have the rings. I like these rings. I like being able to flip it and turn it all the way back behind itself. That's one thing I don't like about this book particularly. Um, so this one I've done a little bit different as well. So this one actually incorporates American history, geography, and world history. So we are not doing world history for first grade, we're just doing American history. So I have some lines that seem like they reach crazy. Um, so for, this, for history and geography, we're actually only doing two lessons a week. We're only doing, so we're only doing two days a week where we do history and geography. Sometimes it's one history and one geography, and sometimes it's two history. It just kind of depends on how this fell together. So basically it's, I just have two lessons, two lessons, two lessons, two lessons, two lessons, all the way through. And again, that comes out to make my four terms for the year, okay? I hope that makes sense for you guys. This here, um, they have their different terms. Um, you have your American history. This is what, they, what they're recommending. Like I said, um, we're not doing it exactly like this. So for us, we're not doing world history at all. And again, we're either doing two days of American history or we're doing one day of American history and one day of geography. And then the seven laws we do actually every single day. Then you have your, it tells you how to use it, how to do narration, how to use living books, the book of centuries, gives you a lot of good information here. Um, talks about how to do map drills for geography. And then it gives you your resources as well. So for us, we have American history. So we have a lot of books here that we still have not picked up. I'm gonna try to find them at the local library before I buy them. Um, and then you have your different grade levels. Again, similar to the enrichment studies. We have grades one through three, four through six, seven through nine, and 10 through 12. So similar to that, you know, we have this list of books. So when you do the history, you're gonna go through it twice. So right now we're going through this as first grade. So we'll probably be going through it again. Let's see, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh grade. So in seventh grade, we'll probably be hitting this time frame again. So then we would have this list of books. So this one will work for the whole year. Whereas the enrichment studies, I don't, I, I wish they had more reading selections. Or um, same thing for the world history, they give different books for world history. Um, they have another thing for optional things like coloring books and things like that. Um, so again, it has your term, what you're going to need for each thing. And then it goes into your lessons. So your lessons here, 
This is like a timetable I'm not using. Um, are pretty much the same. Lesson one tells you what you need and it tells you what you're doing as a family and then what you're gonna do with just these grade levels. Um, and obviously if you're not doing some of these grade levels, then you don't have to worry about it. Or if you're not doing world history, like we're not doing a world history, um, right here, we just said skip. So we'll come back to that another time. And again, we're on lesson seven, I believe, with that one. So that's a little more in depth to what those individual lesson plans are. Like I mentioned, you basically go through these, you go through this first, get all the resources you need out of there. And if, if it's like a curriculum, like I mentioned, if it's a math curriculum or science curriculum or something like that, then you go through that curriculum individually to see what resources are needed for that specific curriculum. So you kind of saw how I schedule things out. So I don't use a teacher planner or a planner of any sort. I basically just use this. What we've decided, like I mentioned, is we do three days a week. We rotate the fourth day. So we'll do three days, four days, three days, four days. And that's how we do um, all the time. So we pretty much just start our week. So we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Our school rotating Thursdays. That's what we've decided to do. Um, for our individual studies, I mentioned we schedule out 35 minutes for individual studies. We schedule out an hour for enrichment studies. And then, oh, I forgot to mention in the, the history, let me rephrase that. So Monday through Thursday, when we have a Thursday, it was basically an hour and 35 minutes of school. Monday through Tuesday, because we have history, it actually, we have minutes. So we'll add 30 minutes or so onto our, on those days for history. So um, basically Monday and Tuesday, I schedule out two hours and then Thursday and Friday, we have an hour and 35 minutes. And then once we start doing those readers, it would be an hour and 45 minutes. So realistically, you guys, you can get through school super fast as you can see. So we only spend a couple hours a day and we don't even do every day of the week, we split it up. So we only have three days and four days um, which is working out great for us. I don't really need to schedule out individual things. What I will do is I make notes in those lesson plans and I, I just make a note like, okay, we're on this number, we're working on this number, or we're working on this habit, or we're doing things like that. If you watched before, I did a video on my success journal and I do have a homeschooling area within my success journal. So what I write in, so what I write in the success journal is not really the schedule either, but I might put on there, okay, the initial notes. Okay, we wanna do three, three days and four days and we wanna spread it out for the whole year. I might have put those initial notes. And then I may write a list for what are the habits that we wanna work on for that year. And then I can transfer them into um, my enrichment studies, if I will, if I want to. Same thing, if we are working on a specific life skill like cooking or cleaning or anything like that, I can also write that in there. So yeah, so that's kind of how we schedule out our, that's how we schedule out the year. We basically just took one of these and we decided what days we wanted to do. I, I looked at what the average time was per day and that's how I schedule out my time for the homeschooling. As far as every week, I'll just go over this real briefly. Every week then what I do is I go in and I look at, okay, so for instance, we are on week three right now is what we're on, so lesson eight. So I would go through, um, I would, first thing I would do is I would look at my individual studies and I would look here, okay, we are on, I need to mark that other one off, but we're on week three, so I know we have lesson eight, nine and 10 for the week, okay? So then I'm gonna go to my pages and I know, okay, I have eight, nine and 10 that I need to do. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what are the materials I need for lessons eight, nine and 10. And then I, I pull them off. If you guys have seen, I did the apartment tour and I showed you that in our pantry, the whole top shelf is all of Arcadia's homeschooling, well, and actually some of Elsa's homeschooling because I do have preschool and kindergarten stuff up there as well. Um, so we have all the homeschooling stuff on the, the very top shelf. So then what I would do is I would pull out these materials from there and I bring them down to the second shelf, okay? Um, then what I would do is I would look at those individually to see if there was any additional books or materials, so for instance, if it's for science, 
okay, do we need to get anything for a science experiment? So then I would do the same thing with my enrichment studies. I would look at the beginning here and say, okay, we're on week three, lessons eight, nine, and 10 as well. So I'd go to, I'd go to my eight, nine, and 10. What are the materials I need for eight, nine, and 10? I'd bring them down from the top shelf, I'd bring them down, and then I'd look at each individual curriculum at the lesson plan to see, again, to make sure I had everything I needed for that particular lesson. Um, so I hope that makes sense. I'll show you the pantry again really quick. Like I mentioned, we have all the homeschooling stuff up there, organized, and everything for this week is now in this corner. So I have everything I need for this week's lessons. I have everything ready for this week's lessons right there, um, ready to go. And as I use them, I can always scan ahead and see, am I using the same material for the next week? And I can leave it um, up there. Uh, but yeah, so that's how, that's how I schedule out my entire school year for homeschooling. That's how I will continue to do it for the following grades. Like I mentioned right now, it's first grade. Um, so yeah, I like using these three. I really like these lesson plans. It makes thinking about it very simple. I like that they already have a list of the literature and everything for me so I don't have to think about it. So that's why I really hope Simply Charlotte Mason makes some more enrichment studies or at least makes additional lists um, for the read aloud. So that would be really great um, and helpful. Um, yeah, and then, then, then I mentioned like that's how I plan out my um, week is basically I just get everything ready and I just know we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we rotate Thursday. So I make it pretty simple. And again, I just allow myself, I just allow us anywhere from one hour and 35 minutes or 45 minutes to two hours for homeschooling. And that's it. If, I know a lot of you that watch are also using the Charlotte Mason method for homeschooling. So I'd love to hear what kind of lesson plans are you using? I have seen a few of you out there using the Simply Charlotte Mason ones as well, which I think is really cool. Uh, so go ahead and leave me a comment. Um, also, let me know in the comments if there's any other homeschool related videos that you would like me to do. I believe I still need to make one specifically specifically for uh, history or geography. I don't think I've made those videos for you yet. And other than that, I think I have every other curriculum up on the playlist. But as always, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. Do you want to sit down? Yeah. Okay, let me get a chair. Hold on. So you're just going to sit there? I'm a teacher now.